This is video number one in Excel module number one in the Shelley Cashman book on Microsoft Office 365. We have already started Excel, and when Excel comes up, if you didn't open a file, it will uh, give you some options here for a file to open or to choose one of these options up here. And most of the time, you're probably going to choose a blank workbook. So let's choose a blank workbook, and your window should look something like this now. So let's take a look at the Excel window. Basically what we have here is a large grid with cells. You can put uh, basically one of three things in a cell. You can put text in a cell, you can put number in a cell, or you can put a formula in a cell. Uh, we've got the ribbon up here, which has a lot of things that look familiar because they're similar to what we had on Word, but there are also some things that are gonna be unique to Excel. We've got what's called a formula bar up here. We've got rows and columns. A cell is denoted by the letter followed by the number, and you will always see which cell you're currently on right up here in what's called the name box. So as I move around, contents of the name box changes accordingly. If you want to make a selection of a bunch of cells at one time so you can format them all the same way, just take the mouse and click it and drag when you have the white fat plus sign. So uh, you can move it around. You'll get a couple of different shapes here. But if you want to do a selection, you always do the white plus sign, not the skinny black plus sign. So that's how you make a selection. Okay. You can also select columns by going to the top and getting your fat black arrow pointing down and dragging to the right or to the left. And just let go when you've got all the columns selected. So if you need to format a bunch of columns the same way, that's the way to do it. If you need columns that are not adjacent to one another, you can click on the top of one column and then move over, hold the control key down for a non-adjacent selection. And as long as I'm holding the control key down, I can select as many columns as I want. Okay, I'm going to click off of that. And the same thing applies to rows. Get your fat black arrow over here pointing to the right. You can click and drag and select as many rows as you want to. If you just want to select several rows that are not adjacent to one another, it's the same deal. So I'm going to select row two, row four, row six. Just hold the control key down while you click on the row number over there on the left side. When you move the cursor up to what's called the formula bar right here, what you get is an I-beam, and this is a place where you type in uh, contents for a cell, although it's easier and probably more common just to click in the cell and start typing whatever you want to put in. But you can do it either way. You can go up here to the formula bar, or you can go to the cell and you can type stuff in directly. So most of the other stuff is similar to what it was in Word and other Office applications, so we're not going to go over those. I've noticed that this particular version of Excel on this computer does not have the undo and redo buttons on it, so we're going to take care of that right now. This is my quick access toolbar up here, and I normally you want to have undo and redo up there. To the right of this, so all you got right now is auto save and save. Uh, there's a little more button right here. Click on that, and it will give you some options for customizing, and undo is an option here, so we can click on that. It'll add undo. Let's go back up here and click on redo and it'll add redo so now those are nice and handy but you can also do a control z for undo and a control y for redo so now let's start on lesson one uh, the actual activity starts on page 1-14 number two we're going to type fran gold real estate budget in cell a1 a1 is the upper left corner here so fran gold hit enter when you're done it looks like it's in cells B1 and C1, but it's not. If we want to put something in B1 and C1, we can click on those cells and type it in. And what's in cell A1 will get truncated. So we want to hit the enter key when we're done. I've already done that. Notice that the contents appears up here as well. So you can edit it either down here in the cell by double clicking, or you can edit it up here by clicking up there. So next thing we want to do is we want to go to cell A2 to select it. We want to type monthly estimates as the cell entry. Hit enter. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. So I'm going to go down here to our zoom and hit plus a few times. You can also do that by just holding control key down and using the wheel on your mouse. Push it forward to make it bigger. Pull it back to make it smaller, which is what I'm doing right now. Now let's go over to page 1-15. Column titles. We want to select cell A3. I'm going to type in the word income. Now flip over to page 1-16. If you hit the enter key, it'll take you down the next line. But if you're done and you hit the right arrow key, which I'm going to do right now, it will take you over to the next column. 
So we have some things we're going to type in for column headings in row three. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks like we're going to do all the months through December. And we repeat those steps on row eight, where we're going to put expenses in column A. And we're going to put the months in columns B through M. Now he says to type them. We're not going to do that. We're going to select them, including the word total. And we're going to copy them. You can go up here and choose copy or just do the keyboard shortcut, Control C. It will highlight your selection. Then we're going to go down here to B8 and we're going to paste it in with a Control V. This dancing line will stay here until you hit the escape key or click someplace else on the worksheet. So now we've got all that done, we're going to go to the top of page 1-17 and we're going to enter some row titles. First one's going to be in cell A4, Commission, press the enter key, so Commission, Interest, and Total. Then we're going to go down to A9, and we're going to type in some more row titles, rent. Okay, when you finish typing all that in, let's go to the top of page 1-18, and we're going to enter some numbers. Start in B4, and we have quite a few numbers to type in. We're getting our numbers from table 1-1 on page 1-18. So this is going to take a while. We're going to type in all of the remaining numbers in table 1-1 on page 1-18. Now our red is 1,500 all the way across. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that all the way across. And here's how you copy. Go to the lower right-hand corner of what it is that you want to copy. And you'll get a black skinny plus sign. That's called the fill handle. I think it ought to be called the copy handle, but it's called the fill handle. Just click and drag all the way over to December, and we will get that number filled in for us. Okay. It looks like most of the rows, the number is the same all the way across. There are a few exceptions, but let's just do our first column here. 325. And you can select more than one cell to copy. So get your fat white plus sign click and drag through all of these numbers and then get your skinny black plus sign your fill handle and drag it all the way across to column m so now let's let's double check the utilities row is 325 all the way across the advertising row is 400 all the way across so we're good there the website is 500 in July, and that is the only expense for the website. Let's take a look at printing, and that is 200 all the way across. Office supplies is, looks like 200 every quarter. So we're going to zero these out. I'm just going to select them, hit the delete key. Select them and hit the delete key. Okay, I can put zero back in there if I want to, but it's not really necessary. An empty cell is treated as a zero, but for this to look better when we print it out, we might want to go ahead and put the zeros in, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yes, appears to be 100 all the way across. Miscellaneous appears to be 250 all the way across. So our numbers now appear to match what is in table 1-1 on page 1-18. Now we can flip over to page 1-20, and we're going to take a look at using some simple formulas. So we want to go to cell B6, column B, row 6, and I've lost my first two rows here, so I'm going to scroll back up. So this is where we're going to put the total. I want to add this number and this number together. There is on the Home tab, over here, there's an Auto Sum button. There's a down arrow too, but we're going to ignore that for right now. Just click on Auto Sum. And Excel assumes if you're at the bottom of a column and you click on the auto sum button that you want to sum the numbers that are above you. So we're in B6. There are numbers in B5 and B4. Sum is the name of a built-in function. It's a, this is a formula. For all formulas start with an equal sign. And sum is a function. When you provide a function, you've got to tell it what it is that you want that function to use. So sum means you're going to add them up. We've got to tell it the numbers we want to add up. 
And this notation B4 colon B5 means everything from B4 to B5. That's not a big deal here, but if I go down here and I want to add up all those numbers, I can simply say B9 to B16. I don't have to list all of the ones in between. So until you hit the Enter key, the formula is not entered in the cell. It's always a good idea not to trust Excel when it's in a formula for you, but go ahead and verify it and make sure that it really is the formula that you want in there. This is what I want. One nice thing about Excel is that it puts a little dancing line around those numbers, so it's real easy to see which ones the sum function is going to be using. So go ahead and hit the Enter key. We want to do the same thing in B17, so go down here and click on Auto Sum. And again, because we're at the bottom of a column of numbers, it will add all the numbers in the column for us. Go ahead and visually verify that it is actually adding the numbers you want to, and then go ahead and hit Enter when you're convinced that it's correct. Now let's go flip over to page 1-22, and we're going to copy a formula. We're going to take that total from B6 here. We want to copy it all the way across. We want these two numbers to be added, these two numbers to be added, and in every column I want to add up the numbers. So let's go ahead and click on that and drag it all the way across. And you might expect that if the first column here is adding these two numbers and I copy that formula, it's going to add those same two numbers over here, but it does not. If I copy the formula one column to the right, Excel automatically adjusts the formula to compensate for the fact that I moved over a column. So in here, it's adding B4 and B5. Over here, it's adding C4 and C5. Over here, it's adding D4 and D5 and so on. So what that original formula really means um, is it doesn't really mean B4 to B5. It means B4 is two cells above the current cell, and B5 is one cell above the current cell. So what it really means is sum the numbers that are in the two cells above. And if you look at it that way, then it makes perfect sense that when I get over here, it's going to sum the two numbers that are above it. And same here, same here, and so on all the way across. As a matter of fact, if I took this formula and copied it, I'm just going to do a Control C to copy it to the clipboard. And I'm just going to go down here and pick a random spot, and I'm going to paste it in. If I double click on it, it is trying to add, I'm in row 23, column E, it's going to add the two cells above it, 21 and 22. So that's what's called a relative cell reference. I don't really need that, so I'm going to press the delete key to get rid of it and scroll back up to the top. We're going to do the same thing down at the bottom of our expenses list. So select that cell with the formula in it. And this formula means add the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cells that are above it. And if I copy it to the right, we will add the eight cells above each one of these cells in the total row. Pick one and double click on it, and you'll see. By the way, I'm hitting escape to undo the selection. But any place you look, it's going to be adding the eight numbers that are directly above the copied formula. Okay, now we're at the top of page 1 24. We want to go to cell N4. We want to select all three of these cells here. And if you click auto sum at the end of a row of numbers, guess what it does? It will sum everything in the row for you. And if you select several cells like this and click on auto sum, it will try to sum all three of those rows for you. And just to verify, it's always a good idea to double click and make sure it really is summing the numbers that you want it to sum. And it is, same thing here, hit escape, same thing here, hit escape. And we're going to do the same thing down here at the bottom with our expenses. So we're going to select all of those. We're going to click on Auto Sum, and it will automatically sum all of those numbers for us. I think we'll stop video one here, and we'll continue at the bottom of page 1-25 with video number two.